All right, guys, so today I'm going to show you why I like to opt for the physical DPS set official over the more popular electro damage support set for official. And the reason why I like to take this physical DPS set is because you can basically left click spam your enemies to death, and it's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, you can get some really ridiculous damage outputs if with the correct builds and whatnot. So let's just jump right into this. Uh, let's just show you how much damage you can really deal with the full physical DPS set. Oh. Just gonna break the uh, core right here and one important thing is the always proc superconduct which is an elemental reaction that basically decreases physical res uh, physical resistance and as you can see the numbers are pretty crazy 4,000 crits the occasional 6,000 crits so yeah he's already at less than half HP and the battle has barely begun yet so it's kind of hilarious Let's see if I can dodge this nope Uh, we're gonna wait for him to strike again so I can break the eye. Okay, that was a solid half health bar, half health bar. Alright, hit me, hit me, bitch. Nope. Alright, so that's gonna break the eye in a second. There we go. So now we're gonna proc Superconduct one more time. This time I think I can actually use my ult for this. Now, Diona ult because it always procs the cryo, uh, cryo element, and Oz always uh, procs the electric element. You can get insane superconduct, uh, superconduct procs consistently, which will keep decreasing his physical uh, resistance and it's basically free real estate. You just melt him to death, as you just witnessed. So yeah, this is basically just a physical DPS monster build I have going off official. We're gonna jump right into the artifacts, the weapons, and everything else that's important that you need to build official and how to make your official as much of a monster as mine is. All right guys, so first and foremost, let's jump right into my official's main, stat, uh, main stats here. My official has a max 15,000 HP, which really isn't that impressive, but if you look at everything else in a second, my attack is a base 2200, which is pretty insane for level 80 currently. Uh, as for everything else, I have a 30% crit rate and a 140% crit damage, which is a pretty insane number in really any rank. Uh, her physical damage bonus right now is at 83%, which is a number I'm pretty satisfied with because this is near doubling the amount of damage her left clicks will deal without physical damage bonus. So yeah, this is definitely a very important stat for the physical DPS set that we're going for. Try and max this stat out as much as possible and definitely try and max your crit rates and crit damages with uh, substats as much as possible. While obviously maintaining a good attack stat so you don't fall off at all. Alright, so let's jump right into the weapon next. Uh, the weapon I'm running for Fischl right now is the Amos Bow, and this is basically the ideal bow you want on Fischl. Reason being, it has a very insane passive for supporting uh, not only her uh, basic left clicks, but her charge attacks as well. Uh, if we're, gonna re we're gonna read this in a second. Uh, first, let's look at the base attack at what, rank 80. Uh, and it gives you 532, as expected of a 5 star bow, and also gives you attack percentage. Uh, now, this is an okay stat. Uh, I like the crit rate that Skyward Harp gives you, but the reason why I would prefer Amos Bow over Skyward Harp is because of his passive right here. Strong Willed increases normal attack and aim shot damage by 12%, in which is basically martial artist pa passive. Uh, martial artist being an artifact set. So you, not only are you already getting like a martial artist set on a weapon, you're also getting the second passive, which increases your arrow damage for by 8% for every 0.1 second that it's in flight. This is an insane passive, and it can stack up to 5 times. So you can potentially deal 40% more damage on a single left click. Keep in mind, there's no there's no cooldown on this passive. You can potentially deal 40% more damage with your left clicks if you're at the, if you're, if you're at the right distance. 0.1 seconds is really not that long. You could kind of be at like a 5 foot radius of an enemy, and you'll be getting the max, the max like... What's the word? Max efficiency from this passive. It's a very insane passive, but obviously not everyone is as lucky as me to get the Amos bow. So what are some better options? Or not better, but what are some other options that you can take for Fischl, you might be asking me. So let me get right into that. Uh, some other options you could take, like I mentioned earlier, is the Skyward Heart. But unfortunately, I don't like the Skyward Heart passive as much as the Amos bow passive. It increases crit damage by 20%. 
and it and its hits has a 60% chance to inflict a small AO, AOE attack, which deals 125% physical attack. This is kind of kind of like the prototype animus uh, prototype animus passive, which is a claymore that uh, you can craft at the blacksmith. It's a pretty similar uh, similar passive, but it also gives you uh, increased crit damage. You're kind of getting less damage output with this. I've done, I've done the math, I've, I've ran the math. Even with procking the 125% physical damage burst like consistently, it's still not as consistent nor as strong as just basically dealing 40% extra damage on your left clicks. Oh, actually, technically 52% if we include this number right here. So it, it's not as good as a 52% increase to your left clicks and technically uh, your charge attacks consistently because this doesn't really have a cooldown nor does it have a less than 100% chance to proc. So I really just like the Amos Bow better, but I think one stat that puts the harp over the Amos, Amos Bow is the substat. This gives you crit rate, which I really like. Fortunately, no, no bow can be perfect. So Amos Bow just kind of sits up here with its attack stat. Still fine though, I'd still take it over the Skyward Heart. But right now I'm obviously only talking about five star bows. Let's talk about the four star bows. Uh, a very good 4-star bow right underneath Amos Bow, in my opinion, is the Rust Bow. Now, the Rust Bow, similar to the Amos Bow, gives you a second attack stat here. But what's really cool about this bow is actually its passive, which increases normal attack damage by 40%, but decreases the aim shot damage by 10%. Now, you might be thinking at first, I don't really like this trade-off too much, but let me tell you right now, with the physical DPS build, you hardly use your charge attacks. Actually, if anything, who really uses your charge attacks mid-battle? It's very clunky, it's very awkward, especially if you're fighting, like, for example, Child. You don't want to be charging your bow while this man just mad dashes at you. You want to be spamming your left click. So realistically, this is hardly a trade-off. The 40% attack damage that you get from the bow is huge on your left clicks. This is basically the, the second most ideal build, uh, fifth bow, obviously, because Amos bow exists. This is like the second most ideal physical DPS official bow you can have. But yeah, this bow is really insane. If Amos bow didn't exist, this bow would be very good on official. I mean, obviously it is very good on official, but it would be the best. But obviously, this is also a four star bow that can be uh, rolled by chance on the wishes. So what if you don't have any good luck? What if you don't have enough luck to roll the Amos bow, debatedly the Skyward Harp, or even the Rust bow? Well, there are two guaranteed options you can have, and those would be the compound bow, which really any free to play uh, player can get really easily, or the pay option, the Veritas and Hunt. So let's go over a uh, compound bow first, because I've actually used this about like two months ago. So what this bow gives you as a second stat, I really like, it gives you physical damage bonus, which is obviously gonna complement the physical DPS build really well. But the only problem with this bow is the passive is just very weak. It's just really not that impactful. Normal attacks and aim shots hit increase by 4%, which is basically just one third as much as the aimless bow passive, well, the first set of aimless bow passive. But it also has another passive, and it also increases your attack speed by 1.2%. And then this can stack up to four times. So this passive can actually go up to 16%, which is not bad. I mean, it does trump this, but you don't really. The attack speed, even in a DPS stance, if you're solely thinking about the amount of damage you're dealing per second, even with the increased attack speed, it really does not trump the amount of damage that Aimless Bow is dealing. I mean, obviously, if you're a free-to-play player and you don't have any of these options, then the Compound Bow is, actually, is obviously going to be a better option than, for example, the pro pro Prototype Crescent, Sacrificial Bow, these other four-star weapons, whatnot. So, yeah, for the Compound Bow, it's a very good free-to-play option for, uh, what is it? Unlucky official uh, official players. So if you want to build the physical DPS set, but you're unlucky, you're too unlucky, you can't get the Amos bow or the Rust bow. Definitely offer the compound bow. It's a very good option. But what if you're not a free-to-play player? What if you're actually paid, let's say, I believe it's ten bucks, ten bucks for the the DLC? Then you can get this bow, the Veritas and Hunt. Now, obviously, I, I don't know too much about this bow. I've never used it because I've never uh, I've never paid for the the battle pass thingy, but. According to the according to Genshin Impact fandom wiki, uh, shout out to them by the way. Uh, it gives you crit rate similar to uh, the Scoured Heart and the passive. Upon hit, normal and aim shots have a 50% chance, which I already don't like because I like consistency with my weapons. But have a 50% chance to generate a cyclone, which continuously attracts surrounding enemies, 
dealing 40% of attack as damage to these enemies every 0.5 uh, seconds for 4 seconds. This passive is interesting. The damage that you get from the 50% chance is not high, really, but because it's kind of like a cyclone or whatever, I, I would have to see it to kind of get a better grasp of it. It definitely sounds interesting. This All this sounds very great, but the one thing that really puts it underneath the Amos bow, and to be honest, the, the Rust bow as well, is this little part right here. This effect can only occur once every 14 seconds. And even when you uh, max refine this to rank 5, which is 10 seconds, that's still a very long cooldown. And I, I, I don't like I don't like this. It, it just doesn't have enough consistency. The attack percent that you get from Cyclone isn't really as high as Amos Bow or Rust Bow. So yeah, the option, obviously if you have options between Amos Bow, Virus and Hunt or Rust, definitely this one would be third. But I think I'm being a little bit too negative. I'm, I'm talking like as if these bows are bad. They're obviously very great choices for Fischl. I mean, obviously they're gonna be better than like Sacrificial Bow or Prototype Pre Crescent or the string list. Well, solely talking about the physical DPS build, mind you. So yeah, uh, I'm definitely not trying to downplay these weapons. They're very good for the official build, the physical DPS build, essentially. But if you have access to Amos Bow or Rust Bow, it's either one. It's either one, really. And for the, but here's the thing. Uh, you should consider the fact that the compound bow. Sure, it has a worse passive than the Rust Bow, but one thing you need to keep in mind is this thing is a lot easier to refine than any other bow. Why? Because you, you can make it consistently from the blacksmith guy, uh, who I can actually uh, open up for you guys in a second. Hello, Mr. Wagner. Uh, so if you go to this guy, I'd like something made, and boom, right here. You can build compound bows, and it really doesn't it really doesn't take that much. You just gotta find these Northlander bow prototypes, which drop pretty often from the wolf boss and child boss and storm terror boss. You gotta farm these, and to be honest, um if you don't really have like five hundred of these, then I don't know. I don't know what you're doing wrong. Uh you really should just be doing the expeditions and whatnot. And you should just have like a bunch of white iron and crystals in, in your back inventory. So yeah, I could really just make like five of these and just get the max refined compound bow. And at that point, I'd rather use a max refined compound bow over a, like a rank one rust bow because it would technically, mathematically give you more DPS than the rust bow. So you gotta take into consideration that the compound bow is the easiest refinable bow. So in a free to play slash, slash unlucky like mindset, the compound bow is also a very good option. All right, so now that I've talked about weapons for about like 10 minutes or so, let's get right into the artifacts here. The artifacts that I'm building right now are Gladiator's Finale and Bloodstained Chivalry. The Gladiator's Finale 2 set gives you 18% attack increase, and the Bloodstained Chivalry 2 piece set gives you physical damage increase by 25%. Now, the stats that you have on your artifacts specifically are really important, especially in a late game sense. If you look at my headgear first, uh, you're gonna want to build as much crit damage and crit rate as possible, outside of attack, obviously. And with that in consideration, these the crit damage slash crit rate roll on main stack can only apply to headgears. So you gotta be very wise with which headgear you choose. And the one that I'm using right now is a 62% increased crit damage on the Gladiator's Triumphus. And the substats are pretty trash. 21% uh, attack is actually not that bad, but everything else is pretty garbage. Defense, HP, energy recharge, whatever. But this is still a very good headpiece. It gives me the gladiator set I want, and it gives me 60% crit damage. So yeah, this is a very high priority, building crit damage. Uh, debatably crit rate if you don't have that enough crit rate to support a build. But realistically, you want to aim for crit damage and headgear. And if you, if you can't find either of those things, then attack percent is fine, temporarily. Now, another important stat on your goblets, because goblets are the only artifacts that can give you uh, damage bonuses such as... Uh, Hydro, Cryo, Anemo, whatever, whatever. I think this is Pyro. But yeah, the one you want official obviously is physical damage because we're building a physical damage DPS build. This at max plus 20 gives 58.3%. So that's already approximately 6 eighth of our entire physical percentage bonus. So yeah, a lot of the damage bonuses come from the, the goblet pieces. This is definitely very important. You're gonna want a you're you're gonna want a goblet that gives you the proper uh, damage bonus in this case physical and my my goblet actually gives me 22.5 percent crit damage which is very good by the way uh, disregarding the trash substats other than crit damage 
it basically rolled into crit damage every time. 22% is a lot, like definitely very helpful. And this gives me the physical damage bonus I need, so this is a very ideal artifact to my official. Uh, Timepiece, you just want to attack. Uh, and as much crit rate, attack, and crit damage and your substats as possible, I got an okay roll here. Uh, this is what I'm using for now. And now the flowers and the feathers are obviously always going to give you attack and HP. You can't get anything uh, different. Like the flowers are always going to give you HP. My flowers uh, substats are very good actually. It gives, it gives crit rate and crit damage. 10% crit rate and 7% crit damage. And it gives elemental mastery and defense, whatever. You can just ignore those. Uh, the feather will always give attack. And my feather actually gives me 8.9% crit rate. Which is pretty good because it helps maintain a good crit rate for my official. Which is 30%. So yeah. Uh, with artifacts though, uh, you can realistically start using this quote unquote end game build around AR, AR 35, but you're not probably going to have the all 5 star build that you're seeing here. You're going to likely have like 4 star gladiator items, 4 star bloodstained, sh uh, bloodstained chivalry items, but if you want the bloodstained chivalry artifacts, you're going to unlock that from a domain at AR 35, I believe it's this domain right here, the clear pool at Mountain Cavern. If you're below AR-35 and you hover this, it's not going to let you in. It's going to say that you need AR-35 once you get there. Definitely try and grind this uh, domain for Busting Chivalry because a 25% physical damage increase is very ideal. But, okay, let's say you're not in this late game stage, but you still want to build a, an insane physical damage bonus official set for whatever AR you are in. So let's actually look at uh, some other artifacts in the game, some early game artifacts. Now, if we're talking really, really, really early game, like Adventure, Lucky Dog, Traveler, Traveling Doctor, whatnot, uh, and Berserker included, I would definitely just build like 4% Berserker because all these other items are pretty much garbage. Adventure gives you 1000 HP, garbage. Lucky Dog gives you 100 defense, why would you want that? Incoming Healing, ignore this one the most, really. You don't want Elemental Mastery from Shark to Official, you can ignore that as well. And you don't really care about energy recharge official either so ignore that also berserker is actually a very uh obtainable early game artifact so you can definitely try and rush the four set build and if you get a little bit more into the mid game definitely try and implement these attack percent increase artifacts like resolution of sojourner and braveheart but i think a very good mid game artifact and one that i actually uh used to build over gladiators was martial artist because martial artist gives you Increase normal attack and charge attack damage by 15%. And I mentioned this earlier. Uh, this basically just does what Amos bow does. It increases your normal attack and charge attack damage. It's very good. Uh, arguably, it's not as good as... I mean, it, it, I mean, sorry. It can be as good as an 18% attack increase. It, it depends at what stage you're at the game in the game you are. You can sometimes build Bloodstained Chivalry and Martial Artist. It is it is a good option, but right now I'm only building Gladiator's Finale because it has the potential to be five star. So realistically, an end game build, in my opinion, would be two set Gladiator's Finale and two set Bloodstained Chivalry. In the mid game, you're gonna want Martial Artist and Berserkers. Very early game, good luck. I mean, these artifacts are practically just garbage for official, or really for everyone. I think these I've never I kind of forgot about how garbage these artifacts are. But yeah, those are artifacts summarized for physical DPS official. Alright, and now arguably the second most important part of all character builds is maintaining a good talent level. And as you can see here, uh, my official's talent level for her left clicks are currently maxed out for her uh, ascension phase. Uh, you deal 75% damage of her attack, 80%, 99%, and 8%, and then 123%. So uh this is the talent that you want to max out like this is your priority talent you're going to max this one out above all others because you're building a physical dps set and when you're building a physical dps set you're spamming your left clicks which triggers this talent now with her talents i believe you need you need a certain material yes it's this one it's called the spirit locket of boreas and you actually get this one from killing the wolf boss but you're not guaranteed to get this item you can get between the spirit locket of boreas the tail of boreas and like the branch of boreas something like that so you have a one-third chance of getting this item and when you do you can upgrade your official talents it's definitely very important try and stock up on these as much as possible and when you do just max out your uh left clicks your obviously obviously your e and q can't be disregarded they're still important abilities but in 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 like a hypothetical situation where you have to choose one over the other definitely choose the left clicks because Obviously, we're doing a physical DPS build. You're going to want increased damage on your left clicks. 
And with her talents, what uh, you need to grind this item called Ph Philosophies of Ballad, and also the lesser version of this, Guides to the Ballad, if I can find it. Here we go, Guides to the Ballad. These can be dropped in, in the domains, uh, Domain of Mastery, Realm of Slumber on Wednesdays and Saturdays, or Domain of Mastery, Binding Frost on Sundays. These guides, I can't really stress how important it is to grind these. Uh, let me think for a second. I believe getting your talents all the way up to level 8 requires somewhere around, somewhere around like 30 guides. 30 guides to just get it up to level 8, where I am right now. And then you, you need like somewhere around like 9 or 9, I think it's 9 philosophies to get it from level 6 to level 8. So you're going to need a lot of these guides. And keep in mind, one domain run only gives you about like 2. So you're going to need to save up resin, stock up on resin to get these guidebooks and get them all the way up to level 8, level 6, and level 5 as you can see here. And uh, as for these other three uh, talents, the ones you get for leveling up, this one, uh, if you shoot a charge attack in Oz and you hit him, it makes him like electro damage explosion. You're really not going to use this one that much, so you can just kind of ignore this one. And this one is if you trigger an elemental reaction, kind of like the super conduct that you saw me proc earlier. Uh, it will deal like an 80% like lightning strike. So this is actually a pretty decent constellation because I'm I'm frequently always applying these elemental reactions. So it's good to see just this lightning bolt just strike from the heavens and smite my enemies and whatever, whatever. So yeah, it's a pretty good constellation. Ugh, not constellation. It's a pretty good talent. So yeah, with talents, just remember to uh, have a healthy amount of guides to ballad and also make sure you got the spirit lock and the boreases so you can upgrade them from level six. But yeah, that pretty much summarizes uh, talents for official. Alright guys, it's going to wrap up the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I helped you guys find success with your own physical DPS official builds. If you liked the video, then please leave a like below. And if you want to see more guides for more Genshin Impact characters such as this, then leave a comment below and give me some character suggestions. Although I don't really have a lot of the characters, I can definitely manage a few more guides. I do have uh, Klee, which I really like using. I also have Venti, who's pretty much overpowered. But I'm pretty sure Venti's a pretty self-explanatory character, so I doubt I'll ever make a guide for him. But yeah, uh, this is my selection of characters. Uh, if you want to see a character guide, then please leave a suggestion below. And without further ado, I'm just going to end the video here. Uh, goodbye, guys.